Namaste. This is uh, Lila Maya from Ibiza, currently under quarantine, and it's a special time. And uh, I have just fixed my japa mala. I will tell you on the link and attached to the video where I got this beautiful japa mala from, so you can have access to them as well. And today I want to tell you what japa mala is, traditionally how it's used and um, a few of the bits and bobs, how it's cleansed, and a few traditional guidelines. So Japa Mala translates from Sanskrit to Japa means recitation or repetition, and it's usually of mantra in the Buddhist tradition, or anything in which you want to manifest in your life. It doesn't have to be mantra, but more traditionally it's used with mantra. And uh, mala is uh, translates from Sanskrit as in garland or beaded necklace. So japa mala is the recitation of anything that you want to manifest in your life a certain amount of times. So, and I'm going to look at my notes every now and again, um, as I don't have everything memorized. Traditionally, in a japa mala, we have 108 beads. The reason for that, there's plenty, but what I want to share with you is that 108 is an um, auspicious number, it's a strict, sacred number, and it, it is believed that there's 108 energy lines, uh, also known in Sanskrit or in Ayurveda in yogic terms as nadis. So there's 108 energy lines that converge to make the heart chakra which is a very beautiful way to look at it since the repetition of, of mantra is a way in which we can arrive at the heart and leave our mind aside. In fact, mantra translates from Sanskrit and one way that I like to look at it um, is man comes from manas in Sanskrit, which translates to mind, and tra translates to expansion or liberation. So using mantra or traditionally repeating mantras chanting, uh, singing, uh, having them around, or repeating them with a, with a japa mala. It's a beeline way to access the mind in a way to liberate it, to calm the mind, to calm the nervous system. So if meditation is not something that is uh, part of your routine, you can start with uh, chanting some mantra or repeating some mantra and train and train the mind to be able to go into a place of no mind. So mantra is a fantastic tool to use if you're not a meditator or if you want to want to get into this into the strain. Um, every japa mala has a traditionally a bigger bead which usually has a tassel with it or something like that which basically is the start and end of a cycle. It is a not a beat that's counted and um, also traditionally is not touched really. So you start, um, so tradition how it's used, you, um, you start with the first beat that corresponds immediately forward to, or yeah, going forwards from the Guru Mala, which I'll tell you another two words for Guru Mala, I'll tell you now. Uh, Sumeru, which translates to very exalted. Stupa translates to summit. And Bindu, which translates to point, like a focus point. And in fact, the, the third, uh, the, the little lovely thing that the Indian women wear here in the third eye is called Bindu. So you start on that first Mala here with your thumb, ring finger, or middle finger, and you always move forward, pressing the bead and chanting the mala, either externally or internally, one mantra per beat, and then you press slightly forwards towards you, and then you continue to the next one, and so on. Something like that. This is very important using the right hand as the left hand in India is considered impure. So you always move forwards, repeating the mantra, one mantra per beat in this fashion. When you've gone all the way around, 
let's say I'm finished and I'm uh, right next to the before I reach the guru bead I don't want to traditionally you don't touch the guru bead so you flip it around and then you start over I hope they caught caught that um, so mantra repetition is usually traduce, traditionally used in Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, and for meditation. Um, in even in the Catholic religion, this the rosary, which is also used for the same purpose, and it usually for counting each and every repetition that you are uh, manifesting or whatever you want to enhance, and. Um, in India, traditionally, the japa mala is made from, let me get this right, rudrashka, which um, uh, is translates to um, tears of shiver or limitless compassion, which is beautiful. And rudrashka is made from the, the, the seeds of the body tree, which is where uh, the, the place under which Buddha reached enlightenment. So they're very, very special, and they're, uh, the most, they're the most popular. So now you understand how to use it. You understand a little bit of the tradition. I'm going to tell you a few guidelines. So the first um, guideline is that the Japa Mala should never touch the ground. And this is because through the repetition of mantra and the energy and the intention Actually, I forgot to mention one of the most important things in the tradition is to give an intention at the beginning of your repetition, also you choosing a mantra. In terms of choosing a mantra, this is relevant to whatever's happening in your life, whatever you want to manifest. Of course, the most common mantra is Om, and then from there, Om being the seed of all mantras. Um, you can start with Om and then another another uh, mantra following it. Um, so Om Ram, Om Shrim, Om Lam. You can even go through the different uh, Bija mantras for the chakras. Or if you want to improve the uh, the health of any organ, organs also have mantras. So you can literally whatever you want to have manifested in your life, wherever you need, you can look it up online and say, okay, what mantra is good for this and that. You get that. So you choose your mantra, you give your intention, and you sit beforehand for a few moments in silence and meditation, and then you can start. And uh, so don't let it touch the ground, because it's, by touching the ground is going to remove all that potency, all that energy, that intention, the sankalpa you've given to the malas. And do not let it, uh, do not lend it to anybody and also don't have anybody touch your malas because in the same way that they are going to remove the energy. And, uh, and it's, it's very, treat it as a sacred, sacred uh, tool and it's just for you. And also, um, be, besides the Rudrashka uh, uh, seed, the most common is also sandalwood and lotus seed and there's you know wood and various different uh, fabrications I personally like this one which I tell you who is from and my friend Sylvie in Munich um, you can use semi precious semi precious stones which already on their own have a um, capacity of their own so um, so you can choose of course uh, semi-precious or precious malas are more expensive and then the more traditional ones are less expensive so it really depends on your budget on all of that um, and the, the last thing is to activate it properly um, you can look at this as a sadhana practice um, so doing the japa mala on a daily basis for 40 days so in our tradition uh, it is said that to make or break a habit um, you do it for 40 days. So once you've used it for 40 days, it's fully activated and literally just by wearing it, you're going to uh, you're going to activate all that um, or rather uh, abs um, attract that which you are seeking. And a couple of more things. So how to clean your malas? Your malas, the best way to clean your malas necklace is with a full moon. 
and um, also with a stream of a sacred mountain like uh, Kailash or a, a sacred mountain in India or, um, or in the Himalayas or uh, any any high altitude mountain in the spring when the water is coming down the mountain is a beautiful way to clean crystals or malas and um, and also inside a medicine bowl so you can clean it with this with the sound of vibration because we're all vibration after all in fact chanting mantra is going to activate your internal vibration for healing uh, and uh, lastly so when you are not using the the japa mala necklace if you're not wearing it um, and if you're going to wear it not on your around your neck you wear it on your left hand then you want to create a space that's sacred for your japa mala which could be anywhere in your home where you have like a, a like a little temple a sacred space where you have maybe photos of a, a deity that you you're compassionately devoted to or pictures of or of gurus or anything that that is going to portray uh, sacredness and make sure the space is clean and pure and um, lastly I think that's it um, so I hope this is um, beneficial for you to understand the use of, of malas and beaded necklaces they have become very fashionable um, and uh, but I, I I actually prefer to use it so in the fact I've had this for five years since I got it from Sylvie and it broke because I actually use it on an almost daily basis. I have uh, three or four that I use. This one, until it broke, was the one that I used on a regular basis. So <laughs> I've actually fixed it myself. So with much love and light, I hope that this is beneficial and educational. If you have any questions, drop me a line and I wish you a beautiful day. And those of you in uh, quarantine, um, this is a great time to go inward to practice and to get to understand why is it that the ancient world is still teaching us what we need the seeds that we have for the future namaste